Hey everybody, John here. I thought I'd try a different format with this video to try to inform everybody of the latest information that just came out today for the release notes of the latest version of full self-driving beta. This is for version 11.4.8, which was shared by Darwizzy333 on Reddit. I have right now in my car and a lot of other people, if you don't have hardware 4, I have version 11.4.7.3. This is the latest and the greatest version of full self-driving beta. With this next version 11.4.8 it sounds like there's significant improvements kind of bridging the gap between version 11 and version 12. it sounds like they're taking a lot of what they're working on in version 12 and bringing it into this version 11 release a lot of speculation that version 12 will come out in december and, and the reason why is because i think a lot of what we are seeing today in version 11 is already neural nets and complete ai i think it's very little heuristics that we have in version 11 so we may be a lot closer than we think, but again, I'm gonna stick to my prediction of a 2024 release. Fingers crossed that we do get it by Christmas. But take a look at these release notes. There are some big changes here. So first and foremost, they added an option to activate autopilot with a single stock depression instead of two to help simplify activation and disengagement. So disengagement has always been pressing up once on the right drive stock. That disengages it completely. I don't see that changing at all. But the fact that you can single tap down now to turn it on is a really big deal. That's an awesome change. I love it. Right now, if you single tap down, you enter into what's called TACC, which is Traffic Aware Cruise Control. And what that does is it will speed up to the max speed setting that you have. And then if there's traffic in front of you, and you approach a, a vehicle, for example, or any object in the road, it will slow down for them and maintain a gap. What it will not do is auto steer. So the traffic aware cruise control is a convenient feature. However, the vast majority of people are not using it. The second thing here is introduced a new efficient video module. This is probably the biggest change and the one that I really am looking forward to seeing here. And of course, we're not gonna know what the new video module is, but it says that it's going to be it's going to help for vehicle detection for semantics velocity and attributes networks that allowed for increased performance at lower latency this was achieved by creating a multi-layered hierarchical video module that caches intermediate computations to dramatically reduce the amount of compute that happens at any particular time so they didn't mention any percentage increases with thresholds uh, until the next bullet point here but this essentially is telling me that it's going to be able to react quicker it's going to be able to detect these things easier and better there's a lot of improvements that i think we're going to notice they're going to be subtle but there will definitely be improvements the next point again related to this same video module improved distant crossing object detections by an additional six percent and improved the precision of vehicle detection by refreshing old data sets with better auto labeling and introducing the new video module. So not sure how much the video module is related to all of that, but the better auto labeling and being able to detect uh, vehicles that are crossing in front of you and maintaining that object permanence, which has been an issue with beta for a very long time, uh, is going to be a big deal. It doesn't mention vi uh, object permanence uh, per se in this. And if you're new to what that means, object permanence is the fact that an object stays on the screen and then suddenly the view gets obstructed. For example, a vehicle crossing the road and that other object just suddenly disappears. Now it disappears from the visualization. How much the vehicle recognizes that it's still there or not there is still a little bit uh, unknown, but that has been an issue. And you'll notice that in my last video where I had a dummy falling off the back of my friend's car and sometimes it would, it would go around it just fine. And other times, once it, it landed on the ground, it kind of didn't really view it as an object anymore for some reason, even though uh, it was you know glaringly right there in the road, it would just run straight over it. That did happen two out of 11 times. Uh, so that's the next thing, and I'm really excited to see that, hopefully be able to detect or, or notice that change. The next point, improve the precision of cut-in vehicle detection by 15%. This is the one that uh, I'm really excited to see. With additional data and the changes to the video architecture that improve performance and latency. 
So I have not had many issues with vehicles cutting in front of me where my car slows down too much. In fact, a lot of the times it reacts the same way that I would. In other words, I know the distance, I know the speed, and I don't need to slow down. And they also, the other driver that's cutting in front of me, they can also detect my oncoming speed so they know it's safe to make that turn in front of me. So generally speaking, it hasn't been an issue. Every so often though, the car will be a little bit late to respond to that. But more, more times than not, I'm impressed with how it does handle those situations today. So not too much of a concern there. I could see this being a bigger deal in a very busy urban environment like downtown Chicago, where you have to react a lot quicker and you have more condensed spaces and uh, the, the cars w would be coming kind of um, haphazardly or unpredictably, more unpredictably than you would experience in the suburbs. The next point, reduced vehicle velocity error by 3% and reduced vehicle acceleration error by 10% by improved by improving auto-labeled data sets, introducing the new video module, there again, another mention of the new video module, and aligning model training and inference more closely. So this is going to be really hard to see, I think, but vehicle acceleration, sometimes when you make a turn out of a, a side street, for example, and you're, you go from a 25 mile per hour road to a 45 mile per hour road, it will make the turn and then immediately accelerate. That was a change that came about with version 10.69, somewhere in there. And it was a, a big change for me. I loved it. However, in the winter, it didn't seem to be aware of the slippery roads or, or when it's raining, for example, and it would accelerate forward. And then I'd get a vehicle takeover immediately symbol with the steering wheel. And this was annoying to me because it had no awareness of the surroundings. It doesn't mention that in this particular uh, bullet point, but I'm interested to see how the acceleration error is, is going to be noticeable, if, if at all. So we'll see how that one does. But generally speaking today, I'm very happy with how it accelerates. I don't have any issues. Again, it only comes into play with uh, bad road conditions. The next one. Reduced the latency of the vehicle semantics network by 15% with the new video module architecture at no cost to performance. So let's read that again here. Reduced the latency of the vehicle semantics network by 15%. I had to check just now what a semantics network is. Here's an example of a semantics network. A primary node for a chicken that connects to related nodes like bird, animal, and hen. Every knowledge concept has nodes that connect to many other nodes, and some networks are bigger and more connected than others. So they have an example here of like a farm, and on the farm you have animals, and then the, what types of animals? Horse, cow, goat, sheep. Uh, also on a farm you have crops, which would be like corn and wheat, and then on a farm you'd have uh, machines like a tractor or, or truck, so you have different nodes and they're kind of all connected to each other. So reduce the latency of the vehicle semantics network by 15%. So to me, what that means is it's connecting events or maybe uh, certain uh, situations. For example, if you're going through a school zone, I would imagine that this would recognize that it's a school zone and now it's looking for certain things, maybe crossing guards or uh, signs that it should recognize, certain things like that. Uh, imagine like a fire station or a police headquarters or an, any number of uh, areas. Now, I, I would hope that it would be able to recognize that visually, but I have a feeling this is probably incorporating some sort of map data or other information to be able to know the, the semantics network, what, what is around it at any given time. The next point here, reduce the error of pedestrian and bicycle re rotation by over 8% by leveraging object kinematics more extensively when jointly optimizing pedestrian and bicycle tracks in auto-labeled data sets. This one I am really excited about. Probably out of all of these, this one really resonates a lot with me because I have had situations where I've been, I've been driving with version 11 and a bicycle will approach and it seems to know that it's there and it's, it still represents it on the screen, but then it just suddenly starts moving and startles that bicyclist. Let's see, we've got a bicyclist coming on the left and the car is waiting for the bicyclist. Smart. We've got another cyclist coming up pretty quick on the left and the car almost went right into him. <laughs> so he, he looked at me and was a little bit worried that I was going to go, but thankfully Beta saw him at the last second and slowed down.
I have to correct myself here. Beta did not see him at the last second. It saw him the entire time. You can see him coming in from the left here. I'm going to zoom in and slow this down even more so we can really examine this. Here he is gray. My car starts to move. I'm going to provide this feedback to the beta team. It should not have done that, but it did take caution and it did hesitate. It did not run into this bicyclist. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this uh, can track them better and know their direction that they're moving because in this case the bicyclist was was directly in the way but my vehicle went and it was a little bit too slow to react like it I don't know what my car was thinking to be honest with you but it surprised me and I think this would address that so I'm really excited to see that the second to last one here improved geometric accuracy of vision park assist predictions by 16 percent by leveraging 10 times more hardware for data tripling resolution and increasing overall stability of measurements. This is great for any vehicle that has all vision, uh, no radar, no, no, no ultrasonic sensors. So uh, the newer cars, it's all just cameras. My car, which is a long range rear wheel drive model three from 2019, still has the ultrasonic sensors and I still have a radar in my car, although I don't think it's being used. That, all that technology is still being used for park assist and also for smart summon and summon uh, as well. So I will not be able to test or validate this, uh, but I'm really looking forward to seeing other people's evaluation of this to see how well it gets improved with this version. So again, a lot of big improvements with this version. Really excited to see these play out. The last one, improved path blockage lane change accuracy by 10% due to updates to static object detection networks. So let's read that again improved path blockage lane change accuracy by 10% due to updates to static object detection networks. This relates, I believe, to the object permanence. And again, in my last video, I had situations where an object fell to the ground. It was a large, very visible object and a human would naturally go around it. But there were two situations where it did not go around it and it startled me. So. Path blockage to me means a vehicle or an object that's in the road. If it's going to improve the lane change accuracy to go around that, that object in the road, that's a big deal. So I think, uh, especially if you have a car parked on the, 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 in, in your lane and the hazard lights are on, I've had this happen in the city of Chicago where it just kind of sits there and it's like, uh, not really sure what this car is doing, and it just waits, <laughs> and, and it's really annoying. And my car just comes up here, and it, you can see the tentacle. The tentacle is that blue path indicator telling the car like where it wants to go, and see how squiggly it is? It's kind of bizarre. And I hear that loud foghorn sound, and I'm thinking, okay, there's a boat coming, and the bridge is probably gonna be lifted, but thankfully no boats coming or well, maybe there is a boat but they didn't have to lift the bridge for them so I'm, I'm waiting nobody behind me I'm like come on beta it'll sort it out eventually I'm hopeful and optimistic that it's gonna figure it out but after enough time waiting and waiting and waiting it does not figure it out and I do have to intervene you can see these people coming up I'm looking this guy behind me turns into a bicycle <laughs> and then and then back into a human but I'm, I'm like looking around and all these people are staring at me like, what is this guy doing? So I think it's going to uh, address those situations, but I'm, I'm hoping that it will also improve going around objects that are in the road other than vehicles. So hope, I, I hope that is the case and I can't wait to test that. Uh, and, and overall, really excited. I have no idea when this new version will drop but I can guarantee you that the minute it does drop, I will be out there filming. So if you wanna see uh, how these things react, subscribe to my channel. I document these things in real time. The whole point of my channel is to document the progress of full self-driving beta software. So if you enjoy my content, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. It means a whole lot to me. Thanks so much for your support. I'll see you guys in the next one.